Good morning, Brother Chad Long, Delhi Baptist Church. I want to apologize for yesterday's um, devotional. Uh, we should have had one Monday morning. I was having internet issues, and I still don't completely have it figured out, but I'm working on it. Um, I meant to get back to it and make it up some time later uh, yesterday, but I, I didn't. So what I'll do is we have this one this morning, and uh, I will do one Saturday to make up for it. We will still have five this week. We'll just do Tuesday through Saturday to make up for the technical difficulties yesterday. Um, we left off in Psalm 37, 25, and verse 25 is difficult for me because I love the verse, but I don't believe in just, well, it's not a platitude, but I don't believe in platitudes. Um, Sometimes people say things just that sound good, and they, they, I know preachers who, they'll make a habit of when you're going through an issue, they'll just throw you a verse that sounds good and, and leave you with it, and they don't explain it or, or try to relate it to what you're going through, and uh, the Bible is meant to be relative. The, the Bible is meant to help us through whatever we're going through. But you can't give someone the wrong verse for the occasion they're going through. I think the Bible covers everything. I think the Bible is all-encompassing of the life we live and the way that we are to live it. I think God made the point to take care of all of our needs through Scripture. Um, it's, it's complete. There's nothing that's missing. There's nothing it doesn't cover. But if you give somebody the wrong verse, it doesn't help them. It's just a platitude at that point. If you just find one that sounds nice and you give it to them, even though it's true, it's it's all true, it may not be relative to their situation in that particular verse. And I've known people to do that with verses like this one. I want to read the verse and then I want to try to explain what I mean by that. Because if we don't understand what we're reading, if, if, if we're like the Ethiopian eunuch. Understandest thou what thou readest? How can I accept, accept some man? Explain it to me. Uh, that's from Acts chapter 8 for them that don't know. But the, the point I'm making <clears throat> is you have to look at what's being said, the context that, uh, that surrounds it, and how it applies to us today. And that's what I try to make a practice of doing is, is finding what Scripture is saying to us, what God means for us to get out of it. And it may differ from person to person just because our lives differ, but the word is the same. So I'll tell you what he's showing me, and I hope it'll help you. So I'll actually back up just a little bit to verse 23, where in Psalm 37, the Bible says, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, which is another word for established. It means his steps are established by God. If, if there's any good in him, the good in him is God. And that's what that means. So the steps of a good man, if he is a good man, that definition of good comes only from God. Uh, James, uh, the Lord's brother, actually says that every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights. So the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. He who loves God is, is going to exemplify God, and he's going to be organized and established in the things he does for the Lord because the Lord does it in him and through him. Verse 24 says, Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And this verse is very important to recognize because we will fall. We will make mistakes. But when we have the Lord working in us and through us, we don't really fall down very far. We, we don't. It's not the same as... as uh, somebody who falls down without the Lord because they don't have the strength and ability to continue. These self-help gurus crack me up because they, they really believe that they're helping somebody. and There's no such thing as self-help. Okay, you're either getting your strength from Almighty God or you're getting the a fake version of it through Satan. And he does. Uh, Satan empowers some people. There are some people out there who have the more energy and strength and desire and, and, and uh, will than we have. And it's not of God. And it's not of themselves. 
there uh, there are those that have that, but there's no such thing as this self help. You know, you've got uh, you've got to trust in the Lord. And the Bible tells us there, verse 24, Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. And then he says, I have been young, and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Now, keep in mind the context of what David is saying. This is David talking, and I believe the Lord's speaking through him couple of things to note. First of all, he's talking about those of us who are following the Lord. He made a point to say the steps of a good man that delighteth in his way. He made a point to say he may fall, but he's not utterly cast down. The Lord is holding him with his hand. And then he goes into this verse saying, I've, I've, I've been young. David says, look, I was a young man. Now I'm old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Now, I've, I've, I've gotten a lot of pushback on this verse because there are people in this world who do suffer. There are people who go hungry. There are people who feel like they've been forsaken. And all I can, all I can say is, like David, personally, I've not seen a godly person go hungry. Now, has it happened? I don't know. Maybe in a third world country somewhere, there's a Christian starving to death. Maybe. I don't know. But I have to believe that those who trust in the Lord, who have the Lord working in them and through them, He takes care of them. He always has me. I can only speak for what I've seen. David here is, is saying, he's not seen it. doesn't say it hasn't happened. He says, I've been young and I've been old and I've not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't either. And I will tell you that if the steps of these good people, these good men and women, are established in the Lord and they delight in His way, if verse 23 is followed, verse 25 is true. Because when you do things God's way, He makes provision for even the poor. And when you've got the wicked hoarding all the food, then yeah, there were times in Scripture, and we've read them, where there were famines. But those famines happened when the steps of men were not good, not ordered by the Lord, not delighting in His way. For instance, in 2 Kings chapter 6, I believe, when Samaria is... Dealing with a famine so bad that they're eating things you wouldn't normally eat, including their own children. In that situation, there were no good people following the Lord in that, in that scenario. So I don't think he's saying it doesn't happen. I think he's saying it does not happen when we do what we're supposed to do. And it's not going to ever happen again when the Lord takes over and He rules and reigns here. So... What I take away from this verse is make sure that we, individually, that our steps are ordered by the Lord and that we're established in, in His way and that we delight in, his, in, in, in the good things of his, uh, of his will, that we're following His will. And I, believe, I can only tell you what I believe it's saying. If you get something different from it, that's fine. But I believe that if we're in His will and we're following Him, He's going to take care of us. I look at Elijah. There were times when Elijah may not have known where his next meal was coming from. But well, he trusted the Lord, and the Lord fed him, even out of a widow's house who didn't have anything to eat herself, who was preparing to die, to starve to death. The, uh, the benefit of a godly man being near her, God blessed her too. Her and her son were able to eat, and he was able to eat. I believe, especially when God's using us for His purposes, He takes care of us. He feeds us and, and, and you know, gives us the things that we need. And so I hope that that clears it up. Um, the reason it, it burdens me is because I've been to children's hospitals where I see kids that are just suffering. But I have to remember, they're suffering because of the result and fallout of sin. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. And we have... 
we have such a wicked society that sometimes those that are suffering, if we're being honest, they're suffering because of us, because of our sin and our our lack of, of leadership and guidance and, and following the Lord the way we're supposed to. So all I can take away from that is I've, I've not seen, when people are following the Lord, I've not seen them do without. And I know in our church, I don't know of anybody at least in our community or in our church that's doing without. I know there's people hurting, but there's they're going through things, but I also know the Lord's holding their hand and walking through those things with them. So enough about that one verse. I just wanted to try to clear that up. And if you have questions, I wish you'd reach out to me. If you have uh, if maybe if you you know if you see something, there's a there's a way to comment on these videos and I get the comments. If there's something you want to add to or take away or contribute as long as it's constructive and not done in ugliness I'll certainly um, I'll certainly look at it and, and be willing to hear other opinions on that that's what I'll take away from it we'll move on verse 26 he is ever merciful and lendeth and his seed is blessed God's mercy is apparent in the fact that we're all still here um if somebody decided to make me God and they haven't, then they won't. But if somebody decided, if the Lord ever decided to give me that kind of power, I, I would have been tired of the way people act. Especially in today's climate. Um, I, I would have had enough. I saw a video this week, it really troubled me, of uh, somebody who brought a little girl to a protest. And I just couldn't understand the, the logic in that. I've got children. I'm trying to keep them from that stuff. I don't want them in that. Um, do I get upset about things going on in our country? Sure I do. Sure I do. I get upset about things going on in other countries. I've got friends, good friends, in Kenya. And uh, I've got got uh, some other missionary friends that are, are in some tough places. Of it. There's some in Kurdistan. Um, you know, people that I know. Uh, that, are, that are out risking their lives to to honor the Lord and what I see is that God is merciful He is because He allows these people to be where they're at and to do what they do to show His mercy and His love and He shows it through us a lot of times He uses God's people to show uh, he, he uses His people to show His love and mercy and He is ever merciful He has been so merciful to me and he, he lends, he lendeth, and uh, I often remind people the things you have, they're not yours. They're, they're uh, on loan from God. They're, uh, I get tickled at Rush Limbaugh because he's all the time saying, with talent on loan from God. And he says it in a way that he's, he's trying, I think he's trying to make some folks mad. I don't know, but he doesn't make me mad because I don't, I don't know. I don't even know if he's a believer. I, I don't know enough about him. I just know that he, he makes that statement. And whether he means it sincerely or not, it's true. Our talents, our, uh, our families, everything we have God's blessed us with, they're on loan from God. So he's merciful and he lendeth. And his seed is blessed. Um, he takes care of our children. That's what that means. I can speak for myself. He has. He's taking care of my children. He, he makes sure that they're all, you know. I was so, so blessed Sunday when I asked them about who Jesus was to them. And all of them had a different answer, but a right answer and a good one. And uh, it just reminds me that my seed is blessed. Because they belong to Him. He, he, lended, he lended them to me and they're His. And He blesses them because they're His. Verse 27. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. Now, obviously, we need to depart from evil. We need to do good, and we're going to dwell with Him forevermore if we belong to Him. It says in verse 28, For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not His saints. This, uh, this, this section is important because somebody was telling me this week, you know, we may disagree with the way that our governments run, and especially with uh, some of our authorities, um, even even you know police officers. I don't agree with them all the time, 
Um, in fact, I've had my own fair share of run-ins with their judgment. <laughs> but we have to have law. We have to. We have to have some kind of uh, structure that's based upon God's laws. And we do in this country. While it's flawed, the flaws are not in, in God's law. They're in the way that we implement ours that are supposed to be based on His. Our, our country's laws are based on the Bible. You may not have known that, but that's true. The, uh, the Constitution was based upon the laws of God and the Bible. This was a Christian nation when it was founded, and so it has uh, Judeo-Christian principles, and the laws are supposed to reflect that. And when they're followed and, and treated right, and people are treated fairly and equally, they work. As you've seen um, with the recent mess, when they're not handled properly, uh, and when, you know, when you don't show the love and mercy that they're supposed to be a part of implementing the laws, <coughs> then, uh, then you cause all sorts of problems. But the Lord loves judgment. And there's several things that means, but one of the things it means is that we're supposed to look at the situations we're in and judge them the way God would judge them. Um, we're not supposed to get personal with these things. That's what's going on now with all the riots and stuff. People are, are well, don't get me started. They have their own agenda and they're taking these things personally. They're not aimed at them. What we're supposed to be doing is looking at things the way God looks at them and using godly judgment and knowing that, okay, we can see the wrong here. We don't have to react in a wrong way. We can see the wrong, we can try to correct the wrong, but you don't correct the wrong by putting more wrong in the equation. It's like I said a minute ago about that little girl at the, at the protest. That's not good judgment. Um, I don't care what your reasons are. There's no, you should never take your children to something that could potentially be violent and dangerous. We're supposed to protect them from that. The Lord loves judgment, but He loves godly judgment, good judgment says, and he forsakes not his saints. Now that's talking about his people that are using good judgment. He does not forsake us. Even if you follow him all the way to martyrdom and you die for his namesake, he doesn't forsake you. I'm convinced he's holding your hand through that experience as well. It says they're preserved forever. He's talking about his saints that love him and love his judgment. He will preserve us forever. That word preserve reminds me of People who like to can and, and jar things, you know, they, uh, they have a way of sealing that and preserving it for long periods of time. Well, the Lord invented that process, and He can seal and preserve His people forever, and He does. And that's comforting. I, I don't know about y'all, but that's comforting to me. The Bible says we're sealed under the day of redemption. And uh, it's, it's, it's a forever thing. It's... It's just a wonderful thing, the way that we're preserved forever. He says, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. See, that's comforting too. It's sad that there's going to be so many that that applies to. But the comforting part of that is they won't be around forever. You know, we're putting up with it now. But it's comforting to know that their time is limited. They're not going to be able to do these things forever. He says, uh, verse 29, the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. We've mentioned that several times, so I won't linger on it. Just know that that land is talking about the coming land. It's not this land, specifically this land, because who would want it? But the land that God has prepared for us, we will inherit and have forever and ever and ever. It's funny. People get wrapped up in their inheritance on this earth especially if they have anything to look forward to. If you've got parents who are well off, which I did not, but if you've got a family that's well off, then you, you may get a little wrapped up in your inheritance. Man, I'm telling you, I'm wrapped up in my inheritance, but it's not of this world. It's, a, it's, a, it's of the world to come, what God's got in store, and I, I do look forward to that inheritance. I don't deserve it. I didn't earn it. But I look forward to it, and I'm thankful for it. Verse 30, he says, The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. And we're going to close there. I just want you to know 
But when you look at things from God's perspective, and we ought to pray for that. We ought to ask God to help us to see things His way instead of ours. You know, there's a way that seemeth right to a man. <laughs> and, you know, uh, all through the judges it says the people did what was right in their eyes. And that's what's going on right now in all the protests. People are seeing what's right in their eyes. And we ought to be begging God to help us to see what's right through His. His judgment's what matters. He's the one we're going to stand before someday. And so the mouth of the righteous, that means his people, godly people, they speak wisdom. And, and, and you'll recognize them for that. They'll have some wise things to say. I think of Gamaliel. Um, you read about Gamaliel in Scripture where he, in the midst of, uh, I believe it's Acts chapter 4, but in the midst of Peter and John having been arrested for healing a lame man, and, and they're whooping on him and wanting to threaten him and wanting to hurt him. And I believe it's Gamaliel who stands up and says, you know, if these men are of God, then you can't fight against this. You'll find yourself fighting against God. But if what they're doing is wicked, it'll come to nothing. God will take care of it. And that's, that's good wisdom. I wish more people thought like that. The mouth of the righteous speak wisdom. And his tongue talketh of judgment. When you've got the right kind of godly wisdom, then you can have uh, godly judgment. But this isn't talking about judging our brother. This is just talking about the fact that we've got to have godly laws in place. And we've got to follow them. And we've got to honor them. I've gone way long, so I'm going to stop there. We'll cover this more um, tomorrow. But again, I apologize for the tardiness of this. And uh, we'll get it made up. Uh, pray for me. And uh, I'll pray for you. I love you. I hope you have a good day. Do study your Bible beyond just these devotionals. Study your Bible and uh, follow the Lord.